are two art pieces designed by a Singaporean are orbiting Earth on the International Space Station. They're part of the Moon Gallery, which currently has more than 60 artworks by artists from around the world. Well, these two artworks are designed by artist architect Lakshmi Mohan Babu. They're inspired by her idea of a life cycle. Each design begins with a single line that starts and ends at the same point. To be part of the Moon Gallery, the artworks were etched into metal cubes about one centimetre across using 3D printing. It's not just about art. There's a scientific purpose behind the Moon Gallery to study how materials and designs behave in the microgravity of space. The pieces will return to Earth after 10 months, but they will go back into space and be part of a permanent display of 100 pieces of artwork on the Moon by 2025. And for a close look at these artworks, my colleague Dawn is talking to their designer as well as the person who helped facilitate the entire process. That's right. Joining me live right now are Lakshmi Mohanbabu, the artist and architect who designed the artifacts, and Dr. Ho Cho Singh, founder and managing director of NAMIC. Good evening to both of you and thank you for joining me. Firstly, Lakshmi, congratulations. Tell us how it feels to be the first and only local artist chosen to have your two artworks up in space. Well, thank you. Uh, I feel it's extra special because it was a collaborative effort of, and it was an effort made by so, I mean, by so many people having a shared piece in the whole Made in Singapore idea. And uh, it was also the effort of not just making it, but also in the making it happen. And that is how Dr. Ho is the one who really connected me to the right people to make things happen. And it started with my very first collaboration with uh, Dr. Daniel, Dr. Daniel Liu. And that is really where the very first Singaporean uh, cube was made. And uh, after that, it's been a, another series of collaborations since then with, with Dr. Ho connecting me. Well, Lakshmi, your artwork literally, and your, your, your artwork literally, quite literally takes this made in Singapore idea to the next level. It's bound for the moon. Uh, and it might be described as a world in and of itself, a little universe, if you actually have, I mean, for, for those people who had a look at it, you've used these interesting design elements like the mandala uh, to put together all of these elements about culture, religion, social status that we see here on earth. So were these themes a natural choice or an obvious choice in your design process? Well, let's say it was more of observation and kind of looking at uh, seeing what seemed to be obvious, but then very often the obvious is not. And in some ways, I kind of related that the whole idea of the mandala to Singapore, because Singapore is really like the little red dot on the planet. <laughs> so it is like this one, the idea from you know, where everything starts. And I thought that was quite an interesting sort of way to put Singapore together with the whole idea of you and your universe, where we are really this whole multicultural, multi-ethnic society here in Singapore. Dr. Ho, let's bring you in on the conversation here. Uh, we understand that the Moon Gallery describes itself as, as a place where art and space is going to meet. So what scientific mission does it serve? Thank you. First and foremost, uh, I'd like to mention that 3D printing is a very unique manufacturing technology that is able to bridge the digital and physical divide, especially objects with very complex designs. Um, among all the initiatives we have looked at over the years, uh, to be very frank, we were really intrigued when Lakshmi approaches with the idea. Uh, needless to say, the opportunity to make history for Singapore, uh, support a fellow Singaporean with such an audacious idea to send an expert to the moon was really a no-brainer. Uh, I'm really glad that it has planned out so well, uh, since uh, there are always elements of uncertainty for any technical projects of this nature. And for this, I credit uh, the professors at the Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. So as Lakshmi mentioned, you know, you were the responsible for linking her up with all these various scientists from different organizations to help her fabricate those designs, to get them together. And tell us something about the, the key considerations that went into just figuring out how you were going to convey those ideas to create uh, this 3D printed cube. Well, um, as you mentioned, to substantiate, uh, you know, what we had to first imagine what she had in the vision, uh, you know, it was very fortunate that she already had the visuals uh, through her 
paintings to convey what she wanted. Uh, secondly, I would say that she's obviously uh, an innovator at heart. So uh, the idea to 3D print uh, the objects uh, designs came very naturally when uh, these ideas were being discussed. And what is also unearthed is that is kind of stretch uh, our scientists to think about uh, the technology in a different way, right? Uh, as opposed to uh, building products and pots for industrial applications. In this case, it was really for uh, something that was extremely uh, unique and rare. And Lakshmi, to translate your artwork into this very small sort of uh, 3D printed object, it, it took quite a bit. I mean, and, and the de some of the detail may have been lost perhaps in, in producing this piece. I mean, how did you manage to overcome that? Well, I'd have to credit that to the professors at NTU and, you know, and the support I got from NAMIC because, yes, a lot of detail did get lost when it was reduced to that size. But I felt the essence was still the same. And as long as that was the case, uh, it, was, it was good because in, in the very first cube, uh, it, the detail was actually pretty good because it was created in aluminum and uh, it had very, very clear details in that. The second cube uh, was, again, a very interesting collaboration with Professor Matteo Seita because he actually used the material properties to translate my ideas in, into the design. So that was also extremely interesting. So it's this very interesting use of different kinds of materials, and that's what part of this project is about, to see how these materials are going to behave in, in a space, as it were. So Dr. Ho, uh, as we continue to see more space projects like this being undertaken by our scientists, how do you see this sort of marriage of art and technology going forward? Well, um... Well, I'm not an artist, so um, I'll just share some of the uh, couple of personal observations. Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, uh, throughout history, I would say the technology has provided artists uh, with new tools for expression. Um, today, these two seemingly distinct disciplines are interlinked more than ever, uh, with technology being a fundamental force um, in the development and evolution of art, especially in our hyper-connected world, uh, where almost everyone creates digitally. Um, secondly, um, uh, it, in relation to the uh, space industry, um, it's obvious that this is the next frontier. And the nature of uh, 3D printing technology uh, and its ability to fabricate these very complex and bespoke objects uh, using uh, complex mechanically light materials uh, really suits the space industry perfectly. Uh, you know, so you think about what SpaceX has done uh, with their 3D printed rocket engines. Uh, so from our perspective, uh, we, we're extremely keen to uh, nurture our companies in Singapore, uh, especially those in the aerospace industry uh, with precision engineering capabilities to be part of this uh, emerging space industry. Dr. Ho, Lakshmi, thank you very much for joining me this evening uh, to talk more about these wonderful artworks that have gone up in space. We've been speaking there to Lakshmi Mohan Babu, a Singaporean artist and architect and Dr. Ho Chua Singh, founder and managing director of NAMIC.